In nature's scheme of creatures, there is perhaps none so large and yet so primitive as the shark. During 63 million years of evolution, other species have changed or died. The shark alone has remained the same, a throwback to a time long before the dinosaurs. Yet, even within such an unchanging species, there exists one that is superior to the rest. To the handful of men who have seen it, it seems indestructible and immortal. While they may roam the waters of the world, unquestionably their favorite stalking grounds are those off Western Australia. It is here that in search of cameras must go to seek out the great white shark. Is it possible to discover the secret of their survival? series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Life on this planet sprang from the oceans. Here, too, the order of birth, life, death evolved. Yet in this womb of human existence, an anomaly exists. Sharks defy the normal pattern. They have few, if any, natural enemies, except one another. Native fishermen of the Southern Hemisphere know that the disposal of fish remains will instantly turn the normally placid tropical waters into a frantic feeding frenzy. This awesome sight validates the fear that sharks are the ocean's most savage creatures. Sharks threaten human life in waters throughout the world. Of those known to attack man, the great white is the most deadly and, strangely, the one that seems immortal. To find out whether or not the great white shark actually defies nature's laws, in search of cameras venture to Western Australia. The whaling town of Albany was long known as a haven for the great white shark. Whalers were among the first to report the terror of the great whites. They were dumbfounded, the might of a beast capable of tearing huge chunks of blubber from the hapless whales as they were being hauled back to port. A sailor who might fall into these churning seas knew he could not survive. The whaling station at Albany is deserted now. Conservationists' outcry against the slaughter of whales forced virtually the entire Australian industry out of business. Once, deep sea whalers landed tons of blubber on these docks. Once, the waters of the bay reeked with the smell of dead whales. The great whites had long come here for easy feeding, so we picked this site to begin our search. Hugh Edwards, famed Australian diver, knows the adventure and frustration of finding and filming the great white. Using the technique of native fishermen, 
One of Hugh's team creates a slick with fish remains and blood in hopes of luring the keen smelling creature. Our goal is to film the beast in his own habitat. Scientists complain that they have little direct information about how the great white lives, how he attacks, how far he travels, and how he ages. For experts like Hugh Edwards, there's an unspoken excitement about the cat and mouse game of finding the sharks. He once tracked such a monster across more than 300 miles of ocean in 10 days. Like all experts, Hugh admits little is really known of the white. Basically, they're a, a continental shelf shark, which is not deep water, but it's uh, usually up to 30 or 40 miles from land. That's where the schools of tuna and squid and, and so on move. And the big uh, whites tend to stay out there and very seldom come into shallow water at all. So people don't get to see them. I, I believe that a pregnant one has never been caught, for instance. Nobody knows how they mate. Nobody knows much about their habits at all, whether they're migratory, whether they move continuously. They're not often seen in numbers, although when the whales are in, they, they come in twos and threes and so on. A dorsal fin announces the presence of a shark. Unfortunately, it is quickly evident that this is not a great white. The blue pointer, or mako shark, is almost as difficult to capture as its bigger and more powerful cousin. The men decide to kill the mako in hopes that its thrashing and blood will attract the real target. The shark is strapped to the side of the boat. Every precaution is taken to make sure that it does not slip away. Hugh Edwards is convinced that the Mako is perfect bait. The team drops the shark cage over the side of the boat. It will be their only protection against the marauding monster of the ocean. As they suit up, Hugh remembers the first time he hunted the sea. Oh, we started diving when we were kids at uh, Rottnest Island after the war. And in those days we didn't have um, proper diving gear. Uh, we just read about the wartime frogmen and so on, so we had an old army gas mask. We had uh, a hose we'd pinched from Mum's laundry. We stuck on the end of the gas mask thing, we used to hold that up as a snorkel, swim around, and we used to get uh, funny effects with the uh, eyepieces of the gas mask. So you get double vision and things. So most of the time we swam with one eye closed. A quick check of the surface tells the men that it's safe to get in and set the cage for the arrival of the great white. They strain to see any abnormal movement of the water that would signal the arrival. Suddenly, something forces the cage to sway. For a moment, the source remains unseen. He is 18 feet long. is capable of swallowing the mako in three gulps. In a single snap, he can crush the shark cage and the men inside. He is able to tear holes in a boat's hull. Thank you. 
This is the final view of what divers see before a great white closes in for the kill. Rodney Fox, famed diver and explorer, explains his encounter with just such a shark. When all of a sudden a great thump came from behind me and my gun was knocked out of my hand, my mask off my face, and I was just hurled through the water at a great speed. Insta I knew almost immediately that it had to be a shark and that I was in big trouble. And I remember vividly how the very quiet, smooth movement of the tail was hurling me through the water. I gouged as hard as I could around its eyes. I still don't know whether I grabbed, got it or not, because its back jaw was around this area, front jaw here. Instinctively, I thrust my right hand out to try and push it away, and uh, it disappeared into its mouth, cutting all over the bottom of the palm. My blood had stained the water all red, and as I looked down, I could see this big head with its mouth wide open coming up towards me. It is very difficult to see something so large in the water with hardly a movement of its tail powering through without a sound. To know that they are the most dangerous species in your own mind before you, you actually see them puts an aura around them anyway. But when you're in the safety of the cages that I use and work and organize with the filming expeditions from, they have a beauty that is, is, is unbelievable. We have now seen the great white and are better equipped to deal with the question, is he immortal? In order to discover the reason for the seeming indestructibility of the Great White, in search of went to SeaWorld in San Diego, where the only shark exhibit of its kind exists. Perhaps if we understand what has been learned about the evolution and physiology common to all sharks, we will have a clue to the long life of the Great White. Ray Keyes, curator of fishes, acknowledges that most information about sharks has only recently been acquired. Researchers at a California university have found out, examining the gray reef shark in the, the Pacific, that the animal goes through some very unusual behavioral changes before it attacks. It's actually signaling the intruder that, that perhaps it shouldn't be there. There's a dropping of the pectoral fins and a humping of the back and a swaying of the, for the head. And then if the intruder does not leave, the, the attack will be triggered and you know, commence, and it's very, very rapid. Of course, sharks are marvelous eating machines, and uh, some of this has to do with the digestive system. Sharks have a, a rather short uh, digestive tract, although they have, uh, in some species, a short part of the intestine that has a huge surface area and allows greater digestion and absorption of nutrients to occur there. You would have to call them one of the world's foremost predators. They're extremely agile and able to uh, collect just about any food that they care to. Sharks are unique in that the upper jaw does not have a permanent connection to uh, the skull. In fact, the, the attachments are uh, by uh, ligaments and muscles, of course. And this allows the shark, when it is biting, to actually throw its jaw out more or less to grab prey. They don't have to roll over as was once some believed. They can actually attack a prey front on and protrude the jaw and secure the prey. Something that's come to light uh, rather recently is that they have pits on their snout that allow them to pick up electrical potential created by muscular activity from other animals. This allows them to find prey that are sometimes hidden or even camouflaged. I can't tell you a great deal about the aging process and that there's just not a great deal known. Uh, sharks are not well represented in uh, the fossil record and that they do not have a, the type of skeleton that allows them to, to, to be fossilized easily at least. The uh, bony fishes have a, what is called an, an otolith inside the ear and layers are uh, deposited on a daily basis. And, by using micro technique, you can slice this bone and then you can uh, count the layers and determine the age of the fish. Sharks don't have that, at least as far as we know. Uh, they do not have the same kind of layering in the, the scales that the, the bony fishes do that would allow us to uh, use that technique. 
Sharks are very difficult to keep outside of the wild and that our technology until only recently did and did not allow us to give them the uh, proper conditions that allow them to uh, succeed as uh, these animals are. Now that the animals can be brought into uh, the laboratory, we will be able to do some more accurate growth measurements. And uh, we're hoping that we will be able to do something that will give us some idea about uh, the longevity of these animals. And it appears that sharks are relatively long-lived. We do know that some bony fishes may live 70 or 80 years. And it would not be unreasonable to expect that a, a shark could at least equal or possibly exceed that. But at this point in time, uh, we just really can't say a lot about the age of sharks. For more definition, we went to Bill Gladstone, a marine biologist at New South Wales University in Sydney, Australia. Very little, in fact, is known about these sharks, their lifespan. The smallest specimens ever been discovered or ever found was four foot long, which is large as far as sharks go. But as far as their lifespan go, we could, they could live for at least 100 years, no one knows. Going on their large size, the largest shark so far found was 21 foot. So going on their size, they'd have to live for quite a long time. The exact time is not known, though, because there is no information known about them at all. The fact that only another great white shark, or on rare occasions man, can kill a great white shark would seem to indicate that they're seemingly indestructible animals. The thrill of confronting the great white shark has intrigued many divers. They know the risk of encountering a beast capable of bisecting a large sea lion with a single bite. An entire horse was once found in the belly of a great white. If this shark is capable of committing such savagery on large animals, one shudders at what it can do to man. What you're about to see is not pleasant, and it may be unsuitable for young children, but it is a true story. Henry Borse is a respected diver and explorer in Melbourne, Australia. We had been fortunate enough to organize a trip to an island that hadn't been dived before. Uh, something like 800 seals, I believe, live there. We chartered a shark boat and 40 people on board. We were all interested in photography and collecting specimens. There were no spear fishermen or anything like that on board. I had been uh, given a duty of uh, staying on board uh, on safety, and so was the girl that I was with at the time, uh, which meant that I didn't go in the water till later. Uh, when I did, there were three of us went in the water. I took some film personally. When I ran out of film, we played with some seals. Um, they're pretty friendly. They like to show off a lot and frolic around like circus actors. They're really good to be with. Suddenly, these seals disappeared, and uh, which gave me a nervous feeling because uh, an in instinct told me that something was wrong. You know, fish or you know, seals or dolphins just don't go whoosh and disappear. Henry was right. The seals and fish disappeared for good reason. A great white shark was on the attack. I guess he had me down for about a minute and a half. It felt like about 45 days. It was incredible. But you're in such a deep shock at the time. The time just passes quickly. Um, he took the leg right off, just snapped it right off. And when it did come off, you know, I went straight for the surface because air was my first need. No one thought Henry Borse would live. He did, and he still dives today. But each time he goes down, he knows that white death still waits. The white shark, to me, is the only shark I've ever seen that does never show fear of anything. Now, the only thing that I've seen stop a white shark is the things that divers use, like a power head, which will kill any shark. The other thing is the shark itself, other white pointers. When it comes to uh, fighting over a piece of meat, you know, I've seen sharks have a go at each other. But other than that, I don't know of anything in the sea that will stop a, a white pointer. I've never seen a white, uh, no matter what predicament he's placed in, to show fear. And uh, I think this is what sets him aside from most other sharks. 
Here is a magnificent creature with only one enemy, man. And then only if weapons are available. He grows to gigantic sizes in every ocean in the world. We must assume that the aging process does affect him, but we cannot prove it. What happens if he never dies? There is something incredibly primitive about the shark. His body systems are relatively simple. He must remain in constant motion, forcing water and oxygen through his open mouth or die. existed long before man, and every man throughout time has been struck by the same emotion when he sees him. Fear, sometimes blind, sometimes irrational. For he is the only creature alive on Earth that man has yet to control. <laughs> 